Hey Indie Warriors, Peach here with I Dream of Indie to talk to you about Maglem Lord for the Nintendo Switch. This is a hack and slash mixed with a dating sim that combines the two genres to make a truly unique experience. I have a lot to say about this game, both good and bad, so let's get into it. First off, I want to tell you a little bit about the story. This is a very narratively driven game, and I don't want to spoil too much, so I want to keep this part really short. You play as a demon lord who is hunted down. You almost die but come back an unknown amount of time later to find out that everything around you has changed. You are an endangered species as you're the last of your kind. The government, known as the administration, quickly gets to you and forces you to run errands for them. The big problem is you're not at full power, so instead of fighting, you turn into a weapon that other people wield. The types of weapons you can be are swords, spears, and axes. You can create new weapons and upgrade them throughout the game. You can also customize your weapons, which was fantastic. There are points that you can change your weapon into different objects, or you can even add little symbols or little trinkets. It's really neat. There are a variety of characters that can wield your weapon, and you recruit them throughout the game. Each of them have their own little way to be introduced, and I don't want to spoil too much, so I won't get into that, but I will say each of them are also potential love interests. With dating sims, a big worry that I always have is if the characters are going to be likable or not. Luckily, these characters were so charming. Each of them start out as a trope, but then slowly morph into these three-dimensional interesting characters. I loved getting to know them, and I loved all their dialogue. Special shout out to Mauve, who is the most interesting in my opinion. This game can be broken down into three parts, the dialogue, the combat, and the romance. First, I want to talk about the dialogue. There is a lot of dialogue in this game. It is fully voiced in Japanese, and there are good translations, minus in combat when you don't get any translation to what they're saying. Get used to pressing A a lot, as there are lengthy dialogue scenes before every mission. Well, every mission that isn't a side mission. Most of the side missions have no dialogue. There are three reasons you can go into combat for this game. The first is a story mission, the second is a side quest involving combat, and the third is a side quest involving and gathering things. For story missions, you start with some dialogue before going into an area to fight monsters before eventually getting to a boss. Sadly, there's only a few areas and only a few types of enemies, so you'll get very used to seeing the same enemies over and over with slightly different palettes. Combat-based missions that are subtitled Slay in this game involve you going out to fight either a certain number of monsters or a boss. These are much easier than story bosses and are a great way to grind up levels. Gathering missions, or collect as they're subtitled, involve you going into an area in search of different items. Some items can be picked off the ground while others require you beating enemies to obtain. Most side missions can be done as many times as you want. Combat did feel very repetitive, especially since most of it involves mashing Y or using ZR or ZL to do a special attack. It's pretty basic, and while it can be a lot of fun, it definitely wears thin on you after the 10th or so hour. Last is the romance option. You see, part of this game involves wanting to reproduce so that you're no longer endangered. You do this by dating your various colleagues. Sadly, the dates are really basic. Outside of a handful of dates, most of them involve just picking an area and the date telling you if they liked it or not. Date locations include places like the bowling alley, bathhouses, and amusement parks. But then there's the daycare. You have the option to go on a date at a daycare. My friends, if someone ever asks you for a date to a daycare and they don't work there or have a kid, please say no. If the dates had been a little bit longer, I might have liked them more, so this is a huge complaint and a huge flaw for me. To be honest, the only fun part about the dating mechanic was talking to the love guru because of how ridiculous he is. I already touched upon how the gameplay works for combat, but I do want to talk about the controls for the rest of the game. I hope you like scrolling through menus because that's the majority of gameplay. You can only use your d-pad when scrolling, which was a little annoying, though I quickly got used to it so I can't complain too much. 
There are no co-op options in this game, and the only options you have in the menu are to change the text speed or the sound. And by that, I mean change the volume. The art style for Maglum Lord is phenomenal. I love the anime style, and each character looks so unique. Whenever you boot up the game, you'll be greeted to this beautiful anime intro that has catchy music and this amazing art style that shows off every character. That was a real treat. Sadly, the rest of the music was just okay. None of it really stood out, with combat music having guitar and the, your music when you're talking to people having this elevator music feel. It didn't really add anything to the game, though the soundtrack never took anything away, so it's just okay. Maglum Lord is a good game, but it's not great. I think if the dating mechanics were more fleshed out, it might have won a Golden Genie Lamp. I am someone that does a lot of side quests, and I think in this game you almost have to to be able to keep up with the enemy levels, but it just felt repetitive. This game has such great characters, so why couldn't the gameplay be as bold and vibrant as them? I do think there's a lot of fun to be had, so I recommend this game, though I would keep your expectations a bit low. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and now I want to thank all our great indie warriors. Bill T, Christian Cruz, Kevalo, Mitchell Hall, Chris Jackson, Nathan Moore, Adriana Amato, CJR, C. Coyle, Skeptism, Haley, Julian Colbus, Jen Rose, Jesse, CPM, Bunny, JRS8, Raylan, Marky Mint, Dave Harp, Peekaboo, Lex Noyle, Eric, PSC, Adrian Garcia, King of the Hatch, Carmine Red, and Larkison. If you're interested in becoming an indie warrior or just want to know more about us, please check the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day!